then returned and burned the, the evidence, burned her body in the apartment complex down in an attempt to cover up their crime. You're about to watch a parole hearing where a woman, when she was just 17 years old, helped two of her friends cover up a murder. The victim's family speaks out. The details that they share changes everything. On the day of the crime, I willingly got into the car with Andrew and Devin, knowing that they planned on uh, robbing Miss King of drugs and money. On our way there, I was asked to be the lookout and I agreed to do it. When they, we pulled into the parking lot, I was asked to keep watch of any cops or any other people who lived in the apartment complex while they were actually robbing her. And um, that's what I did. I waited in the car while, while they robbed her. Um, later on, Andrew came out and got in the vehicle and um, told me that she was killed in the midst of the robbery. I was asked to drive us home. At that point, I stayed there. I put up money away that was stolen, a bottle of pills that was stolen, and I stayed put until he went back and came back with Devin. And at that time, I washed the clothes that were worn that day, as well as swept the floor, mopped the floor. I knew you know, what had happened, um, how it had happened. Uh, a few days later, the cops came and picked up Andrew. When they picked Andrew up, money away that was stolen, a bottle of pills that was stolen. I need to give her the evidence of the crime, trying to save myself. I took a plea deal. I am fully responsible for not just knowing about it, but not choosing to, to stop it or say it was wrong. Uh, and I selfishly hid evidence instead of, you know, I could have maybe helped or changed the scenario some, but I didn't. Um, I chose to be a coward and save myself. I've learned that not only did I affect the victim personally, but her family and her friends, and not just that, but it's even broader that um, the apartment complex, um, the, the people who own it, they've suffered as well financially or you know publicly. I've ruined a lot of people's lives. Andrew took a plea deal. I helped encourage him to take the plea deal. Devin went to trial and I spoke against him at trial. Now we'll hear from the opposition. Thank you for letting me speak today on behalf of my sister, Ashley. I understand Caitlin is up for parole and could potentially walk free today. I know she's a mother and wants to be reunited with her son. However, my sister, Ashley, was at a point in her life where she was recently engaged and ready to start her own family. She had always dreamed of being a mother and because of the crime that was committed and the role Caitlin played in my sister's brutal attack, Ashley is no longer with us and will never be able to experience the joy of motherhood, nor will I ever have the opportunity to be an aunt and my children will never have cousins to grow up with. You have no idea how much you have impacted our lives. She was only 32 years old and had so much life to live. Our family will never be the same without Ashley. And for that reason, I ask that Kayla does not get granted parole today. I'm Ashley's uh, brother-in-law. I'm speaking today because there are people that that cannot speak today. Um, you talked about anxiety and depression. And when Brittany just mentioned the impact that that what your all's actions have on our life, it's not something that happened in 2012. It happens every day. They went and brutally murdered her and then returned and burned the, the evidence, burned her body in the apartment complex down in an attempt to cover up their crime. So to say obstruction of justice is one thing, but this was a, a brutal attack that we believe was premeditated and, and just unforgivable. You know, you talked about some of the progress that you've made in the, in the past few years, but we're not talking about the amazing person that Ashley was. She was a college graduate. She was an honor student. She was such a vibrant part of our community and our family. That light was, you know, it lives on in our hearts because she was such a special person, but it can't be diminished what you took away from us and how our kids and the peripheral family still suffers at every single holiday, at every birthday, and every anniversary of what happened. I didn't really have anything like prepared to talk about this because it's nobody really prepares you for this. It's a daily thing that you deal with. I'm a very good friend of Ashley's. I was a very good fan, friend of Ashley's and I was older than Ashley and I always wanted to protect Ashley. And so this goes really close to my heart. With that said, she was taken at 32 and my daughter's 34 now. And I just, watch through my daughter the years that remind me of what Ashley could have had. Again, we all know that was taken. And today I feel like we're sitting here celebrating in Caitlin's accomplishments. And it's hard, you know, because while we're celebrating that, I can't help but go back to the day that this happened and the decisions that were made and that three people were involved. And you, I don't know, I guess as a girl, as a woman, was pregnant 
that was in school, as you're saying today, and, and you Mr. had all this. Simpson, you need to direct your 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 uh, okay. speech to us, yep. not not to anyone okay. else. Okay, sorry. I feel like um, we're looking at giving someone parole after nine years, and she was given forty year sentence. I think that that is not enough time in my book. And I don't, I feel for the, for the whole family, I can say that that is not enough punishment at this point for what we deal with on a, a daily basis. You know, every day it's the little things. We all talk about the big things and the big reminders and the celebrations, they, but we, it's a daily thing. It's a daily struggle for us. I just, again, I don't, I don't feel that nine years is, is, is going to really us any satisfaction in this whole thing she still needs to serve. I didn't really have anything like prepared to talk about this because it's nobody really prepares you for this. It's a daily thing that you deal with. Victims family for all these years as well as the hurt I'm once again causing them today by being here in front of this board bringing back such horrible memories. I made a terrible choice years ago to go along with a plan as well as to attempting to cover up a heinous crime I helped commit. It was senseless, I was selfish, and I'm ashamed. She did not deserve the injustice that was brought upon her. I am truly remorseful for my actions. I take full responsibility and accountability for what I have done. From the bottom of my heart, I am so very sorry for every moment of sadness and pain that I've caused the victims because of my actions. Although nine years may not seem like a long time, I've had plenty of time to change. I've spent every moment of these nine years of incarceration taking advantage of every possible program available to understand both why I made the choices and mistakes that I did as well as to ensure it never happens again. I've made many changes as well as personal growth to better myself as both a woman and mother. If given the opportunity of release, I've secured employment as well as stable residency with my support system that is present today. I will also take full advantage of outside support during my transition into society. I just ask for the chance to prove to you that I am a much better person today, standing in front of you than the 17 year old child that I was. I just ask for the opportunity to be a mother and raise my son actively. Thank you. Ms. Henson, uh, you make a very valid point when you say this sounds like a celebration of what she's accomplished. And sometimes it might feel that way, but that's really kind of what we're supposed to be looking at. It's not necessarily who she was as a 17-year-old, but who she is today. My vote would be to grant her parole. Uh, my vote today is going to be to grant with the same condition. Uh, Ms. Lusage, Ms. Lusage uh, your parole has been granted. Good luck to you. Yes. Thank you all so much. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The end of this video is amazing where just the three of them mm -hmm. are on camera. There's so much to say about this. When I was watching this, you know, I was thinking she was 17, she was pregnant. And when she's speaking, she's sort of painted as this completely innocent figure prior to this. Mm -hmm. But these people came up to her, can, I don't know, I wouldn't go up, how do you go up to somebody and ask them to do something criminal and illegal and rob somebody? Like it, they expect her to say yes. Watching this again, she got in the car not knowing what her role would be. On the way there, they asked her to be the lookout. So she was along for the ride no matter what it was. It's um, it's wild to me though. I mean, you're talking about someone that's 17 years old. They're still almost an adult. And again, how do you get together with your friends and plan this murder? And not even that, but to cover it up. What was really stood out to me is when he points out that they actually went back to the, the scene of the crime and burnt the body. Well, you wouldn't hear that if the victims weren't speaking as when I watch this, she goes through the crime so distantly, right? You see them say it so coldly, but when you listen to the victims, that's when the real details come out, the real pain, the real emotion of what happened. You can't just talk about facts in a case like this. There's so much pain and suffering and you can see it. That's why it's so important to have, have their voices there. Often they're not invited to that conversation and all they hear from is the potential parolee. Well, you know, they have, they, at the same time, they have the, you know, the records, they can look at the court records, they take some time and prepare for this, but it is important having the context of the family and, and there's nothing in the paperwork about how it's affecting the family. And I think that's why it's so important that they stand up and say, you know, this is something we feel isn't enough time. Again, this, this wasn't like she's getting out a couple years early. We're talking about a 40 year sentence. It was reduced to nine years. She's getting out decades early. And on top of that, this is something where she took a plea deal 
from, I don't know what the original charges were, but to get it that down to even just obstruction of, of justice, when she was helping to burn a body, she was flushing evidence, she was doing everything to protect these people after the fact. So she helped to, to hide this crime and she could have, she could have succeeded too. I mean, there's no telling it could have been enough to prevent you know, these other people from facing justice. Yeah, you're just, again, it's one of those things where you've already reduced the the penalty um, and now they're reducing it even further. When these, these perpetrators go to, through this whole process, everything's in their favor. You know, you have the constitution, you have their constitutional rights, and then on top of that, you have all these second chances and opportunities where, well, you just have to do the right thing, follow the programs, and you can get out in 25% of the time. Well, the thing that really bothers me too is that she hasn't had the opportunity to do something like this again. So you don't know if she's going to do it again. You don't know the risk level. And when I was watching this, you know, my emotions go back and forth where I do feel for her. She was 17 years old. That is so impressionable. She seems like she has really worked on herself. Doesn't change the fact that she was sentenced to 40 years and that these people are being robbed of that. That one day they received a letter or a phone call saying that this person could potentially be released and it brought this all back. I noticed with the friend, one thing she said is that she was older than her and she felt like she had to protect her. And you can see that she feels like maybe she failed. It's just the pain is so clear in these and it's clear for the potential parolee as well. But it's just, I hate to use the word unfair, but it's just, it's unfair all around. And the only person who put them in that situation is her. Yeah, this is the consequences of her action. At 17, yeah, you make lots of dumb mistakes and, and stupid decisions as a teenager, but most of us don't commit murder or cover up murder. murder. I mean, we all know that that's, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Again, she was somebody who these people thought would go along with this. Not that she would say no, not that she would report them, but that she would accept that somebody was murdered, that she would hide the evidence, that she was already this kind of character. And she's painted here again as being innocent prior to this. And I just, I don't, I don't buy that. And who knows if another opportunity like that is going to present itself for her. She's going to be struggling financially. She's going to have struggles and robbing somebody again may be an opportunity to get out of that. And that could could arrive. It's hard because I do feel that she is remorseful. I do hear that, but I also don't hear it when she's telling the story. Her version of this tale is completely different. At one point, Gretchen starts addressing the perpetrator directly, and you can see she's a little enraged, to put it mildly at that point. This may be her only chance to speak to this person directly, and she's cut off. She's not even given that respect. It's that the perpetrator, it seems, always gets the protection and the victims are are left behind. You can still have sympathy for these people, but also realize that they made that decision that there was this whole process where there was a judgment was made on this is the punishment for the crime. And now you're rolling back all of the effort, the time they went into that and allowing three people to decide, well, actually, we're going to let you out about 30 years early for, again, this isn't a minor crime. It's heinous, and while she wasn't the direct murderer, she she might as well have been. She covered up for them, and that was just her appointed role in it. She may have just as well been the one in the house, and I don't think she would have said, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. Well, it's premeditated. She knew it was going to happen, which means she could have stopped this. That's what's scary, too. That's what really makes her a part of this. And again, I, I think the, the burning the body is a a big part of that too like you're you're done <laughs> but it could have been prevented she could have done the right thing and stepped up so hey if anybody ever asks you to commit a crime like this be like no thank you i don't think that's a good idea they very well may have still gone on to do this she wouldn't be where she is sitting now again all those charges got dropped and she was left with obstruction of justice which doesn't sound that bad i mean i feel like you can get obstruction of justice charges for lots of different things that are relatively minor not covering up a body and a murder. You have this um, this individual too. That's the uh, the brother-in-law, and I think it helped from his viewpoint too of at least having a little bit of emotional distance from this to be able to say something like, "Well, actually, you know, this is a, a, an important factor, which is how she covered it up." And that would be something that's very hard for a family member to talk about to say directly. Yeah, this is what they did to my sister. 
And so I think, again, it's it's important having someone like a prosecutor or someone that's a little bit distanced that can be for the victims and and be, in a way, brutally honest about it as well. And that's something we didn't see here. We saw the judge actually was backing this decision, and that, to me, makes no sense either. I thought the same thing when watching this about the brother-in-law. I thought it was so brave that he was there. I, we don't really quite know when he became involved in this picture, but that he can speak about what the family is going through so clearly like you just said it's so important to have that that advocate who's just a little bit distant i was really just kind of proud of him that he spoke up and i thought that was really brave and to be there to to support the family is a really beautiful thing 